Hey guys, welcome to Last Stop Performance. Today we're going to discuss bench top harnesses, what they are, what they do, and we'll dabble a little bit into how to wire one up. Stick with us to learn more. Okay guys, the first question we need to answer is, what is a benchtop harness? A lot of people don't know. A benchtop harness is a wiring harness that has been cut down or made from scratch um, to eliminate the majority of wires that are not needed to communicate to an ECM. Um, usually the supply which you have with a benchtop harness will only be your power wire for the ECM to turn it on, um, which is usually keyed hots you'll have a, well, at least one or two um, hots that are continuous hot to the ECM and you'll have a ground um, and then you'll have your OBD2 to connect, two connectors, connections sorry, that will either be um, on the older stuff you'll have one wire on the Gen 3 LS stuff Gen 4 LS you'll have two wires um, so you'll have a CAN bus high and CAN bus low on the, the Gen 4 stuff but what this does is you eliminate all the wires that you can get down to the bare minimum so that you can hook up to a power supply, uh, buy a converter of some sort, so it's a converter which is 12 volts, you can plug it into a wall, and then you can have an ECM hooked up on your bench or wherever you want to do it, at your desk, who knows, on your couch you can do it. You can hook up the computer to that, uh, or to your, your ECM to a computer, say with HP tuners installed, uh, plug in the OBD2 port, and essentially you can sit there and make changes to the computer um, without having to be hooked up to a vehicle without having me into a car, um, so you can make any changes you need necessary uh, to that ECM without having to have anything in front of you essentially except for your benchtop swap harness um, and the power supply to go with it. Okay, the next question that we need to answer is what is the, the reason for the benchtop? So what, you can sit on your couch and program an ECM, big deal. The reason behind this is in the LS swap world, um, if you've ever done one, you'll know this. Um, or if you're thinking about one, you need to know this. The VAT system on the GM, specifically, say, like I'm just talking about GM right now, but Gen 3, Gen 4, GM, LS uh, world. When you go to, to swap something in a vehicle, it's going to have a VAT system um, that is going to disable the vehicle from starting if you've got a standalone harness of some sort. It's going to lock it out to where you cannot start the vehicle. Um, at best, it may fire up for a couple seconds and then it'll die. So you have to have a means to unlock that. So if you're in the process of doing an LS swap, say you live remotely, um, you don't have a tuner close by, you don't have somebody with the ability of having HP tuners that's nearby that can stop by your house and help you out, you're going to be able to creak. So you got to figure out how to deal with that. Um, that is where people like me with benchtop harnesses come into play. Um, so. If you need the ECM unlocked, you would simply mail it to somebody like me with a benchtop harness. We would do the changes, unlock the VAT system, disable it, and then if we know what your build is, um, to get some rough ideas, as long as it's not too extreme, we go ahead and make some changes to the ECM to get it to where it would probably idle, um, and also maybe take some fuel to where you could load it on a trailer. Depending on the modifications, if it's minor enough, it may actually drive fairly decent. But I uh, always suggest that you go ahead and get a tune done as far as um, get the wide band out, have somebody that can actually hook up to it, dial in your short-term, long-term fuel trim, but then also do your, your wide open throttle tuning with the wide band. Always suggest that. But, so this would actually get you fired up, get you moving to where you can actually, like I said, if it's minor enough, maybe get it on the road, drive it to a tuner within range, or you know, load it up on a trailer um, and take it somewhere. So until you do that, you're not going to be able to do it. And also, I mean, when you go to fire something up, um, you say you want to take it to a tuner, it's a good idea to fire it up uh, before you take it to a tuner. Um, if you're just hauling it there as dead weight, 
First off, trying to load it with your buddies is a little rough. Been there, done that. But also, um, taking it to a tuner, if it's the first time you've done an engine swap, then you know, you've got coolant, um, you need to run through the system, uh, you've got you know, oil things. You need, to, you need to get the system, make sure the system works, make sure it's fired up, make sure everything is working accordingly, or at least decently enough to, before you go to take it to a tuner. Otherwise, you could be wasting your time. You might get it there and who knows, there might be something going on and uh, you just wasted your time, the tuner's time, and it's cost you money. So that's kind of why you need a benchtop harness as far as, um, or find people that have benchtop harnesses if you're doing LS swap and if you don't have someone close by. Um, pretty minor changes, you can be fired up and running. That's the purpose of the benchtop harness. Now, as far as the setup of the benchtop harness, there's a million different ways that uh, people will do this. I'll go over and show you some examples of my benchtop harness, the, what I like, and just how I have mine wired. Uh, like I said, you're going to get 20 different opinions on how to do it. Uh, I do things over the top a lot of times, so mine's you know, a little bit different for me, but uh, that's the way I like it. So I'll give you an idea, and then we'll go over some wires and stuff on some basic ones that you might need. So stick with me. Okay, guys, I'm over here at the bench here. I'm going to show you what a little bit of my setup would be. This here is the main unit that I have and use. I've got one power supply here that converts to the uh, 12 volts that I need to be able to communicate to the ECM, power it up, and such. Um, basically, all of my um, harnesses, benchtop harnesses that I have, are made to where they will plug into this device here. And so I can use this one device to program any different ECM that GM has, um, regardless of whatever it is. So I can tune anything from E38, T40, Z67s, P01s, P59s, anything um, is set up through this device. Now the way I've done this is, like I said, I've got the power supply, the main one here. The leads coming out, of course, red is the hot, blue is ground on this unit. Um, I've got up here in the corner a little fuse block, which is probably overkill. Don't probably necessarily have to have that, but the way I wanted to do it, this is the way I did it. So I've got a power coming out that will run to this switch here which I act as if that is my key so it simulates being a key turn the key on turn the key off and sends power back out this when it's switched on this is a constant hot like I said and this is ground now some guys will actually set theirs up to where for each individual different type of harness whether it be a PO1, P59, E38 whatever it is they will have their own power supply for each one of those devices like I said, that's common practice. That's a way of doing it. Me personally, I like the idea of having just a dedicated power supply to take care of all of them. Um, the way I quickly do this is any of those three screws there, I can take just one half turn, loosen them, pull these out, and then take my next bitch harness that I have. This one specifically I'm working on right here is an E7 or E67. Um, I have other units that I'll show you here that I can plug into. So this here is for a truck, um, generally, or well, typically trucks, out of uh, 99 to 07, got it written on there, but OBD2 port. Same thing, like I said, as far as the wiring goes, I have three wires. I will have a ground, um, keyed hot, and then a constant hot. And whenever I want to hook this thing up, like I said, come over to the unit, unhook the three wires, plug this in, and then next thing you know, I'm tuning the ECM for this harness. I also have it set up, say for the E40, that one there, one connector is all it needs. This is for an early um, LS1 Camaro, um, so is that one, 97, 98. Here is the E38, um, so one connector only needed for that one as well, same setup, three wires and I can program anything I want. Now, I've got HP tuners already hooked up here. I do have, like I said, I've got the E78, this harness here is for E7, or sorry, keep saying E78, E67. I've got this harness set up, plugged in, the OBD2 port plugged in with my HP tuners unit. So all I have to do is make sure my connection's good here, and I've got the key, simulate turning the key on. There we go. Go to my HP tuners here, click to read the vehicle, I'll just click to gather information on this one initially. And it communicated and it said right out of the gate. It's an E67. It's out of a 2008 GMC Envoy half ton 5.3.
So if you know wanted to take the time to do it, I could go ahead and click read, gather all the information, and then go back, make the changes I need to, and write it to the ECM. So um, it's that easy as far as doing it. Um, next, I'll go over a little bit of just about what each harness or what you need to, uh, what wires you need in each one to wire. It's going to be different from each harness, but I'll give you some general idea um, as far as what to look for. So, To build a benchtop harness, if you're serious about wanting to make your own, I would suggest the first thing you do is Google search EFI Live Bench Harness Wiring Diagrams. Uh, the person that put this together did a really good job of uh, giving some good information for each harness, specifically GM, of what you're going to need to make it work. So definitely search it. We'll go down here and I'll scroll down to show you just a pinch of what you're going to be looking at. It's going to give you a table of contents of the different vehicles, um, ECMs and controllers for trans and such that this document covers. It's um, going to also tell you the pin locations on the OBD2 port. That's pretty standard. Most usually the OBD2 ports that you'll use on the back side of them, they will have numbers if you look real small to identify which OBD2 port you're actually working with. So keep that in mind. This here is an early LS1 style controller, 9798. This one here, they typically have a blue plug and a red plug. But in this case, it's going to tell you over here on the side, it's going to say all blue down through here. So you don't have to have the red controller at all for this particular ECM. It's going to tell you blue pin number 21 that is going to hook up to your OBD2 port, uh, pins 4 and 5 on the OBD2 port. And it's going to tell you those are grounds. So you want to tie that into your ground that will be also in your power supply. So you'll tie that into your ground for your power supply and then also blue pin 21, ground it and send that to your ports 4 and 5 on the OBD2 port. Uh, pin blue 20, so pin number 20 on the blue connector, it's going to tell you you want to power, or put that to OBD2 port number 16. It's also going to tell you that that is a 12 volt unswitched um, power. So that's supplying power to your OBD2 port on number 16. It's also supplying power to your pin number 20 on your blue connector to the ECM. And then you're also going to see blue 61, same thing. It's going to tell you uh, power to OBD2 port number 16 and then 12 volt unswitched. So you can have your power supply uh, come off and basically split or come down into one here and then go to 16 and then both of them split and go to 20 and 61. However you want to do that, you can do that. Number 19 on the blue connector, it's going to tell you it's an ignition switch. So 12 volt switch power. So this pin here wants to see power whenever the key, simulate when the key is turned on. Now that's where I said earlier, I believe, where uh, some people will actually power that all the time. And that can be done. A lot of guys do that. That's fine. But you saw in my setup how I've got mine set up with a switch. I just I like that. It simulates a key. So however you, you like to do that. And then blue number 58. This one here is saying to go to OBD2 port number 2. And it's also saying that it is a serial data. Um, meaning it is the communication line to the ECM uh, from say like HP tuners or any type of scanner. That is the line that's going to send and, and receive data back and forth from the ECM. Um, so that's very important that you have that one also. Um, so OBD2 port number two. But that gives you the basics as far as how this works, um, how to wire one of these up. Just follow the guides here and you'll be all right. They're pretty simple. But like I said, this covers many different types. We've got the E40 in here, the E67, the E38, uh, the 99 to, to 2006 there. Uh, it's even, like I said, got the T42 trans controller, uh, Vortec. It's got an array of stuff in here, so hats off to the person that actually set this up or uh, made this form. They did a really good job, but that just gives you the basics of what you need. So the Gen 4 stuff or a late Gen 3 E40 is going to have uh, two for the data signal, which is going to be a CAN plus or CAN plus, CAN minus, CAN bus high, CAN bus low as they call it. So just keep that in mind too. You're going to actually have two data lines uh, for your gen, late Gen 3 E40 and your Gen 4 stuff. But gives you just a rough idea of how these things are wired up. Definitely do your Google search. Look this place up or this, um, this PDF up. Great information. You're definitely going to want to use it. All right, guys. I hope that I answered some of your questions tonight as far as what a benchtop harness is, what its purpose is, 
And then if you're on the fence about building one, I hope that you feel comfortable enough after seeing this that you can do it. Yeah, you can do it. I did it, you can do it. It's not really that hard, um, in all honesty. So, if you guys want, link up on uh, Facebook as well. Um, Last Stop Performance, it's my Facebook page. Uh, if you've got questions or comments, shoot them below. Also, if you want to shoot me a message over on the Last Stop Performance page on Facebook, be glad to have you there as well, feel free. I'm just a gearhead at heart, guys. This is what I like to do. Um, so just uh, join in. Be part of the party. So take it easy.